Hello, Chris Graff here from Wiley. I'm the Director of Research Integrity, and this is a short presentation about preprints. It's one of the presentations we shared as part of a series of open research workshops in 2020 that we did with several UK universities and in partnership with the UK Reproducibility Network. In these workshops, among other things, we talked about uh, what preprints mean to researchers, uh, whether preprints really get researchers' feedback, and what do journal publishers like Wiley think uh, about preprints. So let's start uh, with some thoughts from a researcher. This is Elijah, Elijah Lowenstein. He's a biologist in Berlin, and he says in a magazine article in Scientific American that he loves preprints. He also explains in his words that a preprint is a draft version of a potential journal article. And for Elijah, uh, preprints are awesome because they save time, they bring the discussion online, and we'll come back to that in a few minutes with some thoughts from Hilda Bastian. Uh, they let researchers share negative results when they might not otherwise have an easy way to do that. And they foster a more uh, open research culture. He explains uh, lots more in his uh, magazine piece in Scientific American. I recommend that you read it. So what does a uh, preprint look like? Well, here's one of Elijah Lowenstein's preprints to make everything a little more real for you. And it looks pretty familiar, right? Like a draft journal article. You can see uh, under the number one there, um, Elijah's name, along with Elijah's co-authors. You can see next to the number two, the uh, preprint's DOI, is Permanent Digital Object Identifier, which provides a way that you can cite the preprint. And sometime after it was preprinted, um, and after the authors had submitted it to the journal for peer review, it was published in the journal Human Molecular Genetics. And you can see that next to the uh, number three on, on the slide. And that, that's important, we think, at Wiley, because preprints can be a new stage in communicating your research, rather than being a new uh, type of research communication. And it's not just Elijah Lowenstein and his co-authors that are uh, loving preprints. Um, other researchers agree that they offer benefits and are embracing them increasingly. Uh, preprints are growing many times uh, faster in their rate of publication than journal articles. In fact, the earlier parts of the pandemic, one hundred, hundreds of preprints were being posted um, every day uh, on, on COVID. And while the numbers are still, um, for the moment, a small percentage of the total number of journal articles that are published every year. It's the comparative growth rates that are important um, and that tell us something about how fast research and research publishing are evolving and also tells us something about how comfortable researchers are becoming with new open research practices where they can find value themselves. And that value um, let's spell it out, could come in the form of feedback. We'll move on to that just now. Certainly could come in the form of speed and openness and also perhaps um, and, and a large element of control over the process. Uh, we think that those are reasons why researchers are finding value in preprints. But let's look at feedback. This is Hilda Bastian. She's a great science blogger and a health science researcher herself. Um, and if one of the promises that preprints is, make is feedback. The question is, do they get you as a researcher that, um, that feedback? Also, Hilda, in one of her blogs, reports some evidence that suggests they might get you feedback, either as comments directly on the preprint, you know, very low in numbers, or on Twitter, because you can tweet the preprint uh, and perhaps uh, Comments on the preprint themselves itself, plus also discussion on Twitter, um, happens on about 10% of preprints on BioArchive. Um, or, of course, the comments could be sent privately to you uh, by email or another method uh, as a result of you 
posting a preprint and then sharing it perhaps on social media. And there's no way to measure that, but it's a common way to get in touch with researchers for normal articles. So why wouldn't it also happen for, 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 for preprints? So what's the view on all of that from Wiley? Well, while preprints might or might not get you feedback, they certainly do add speed and openness. And for publishers like Wiley, preprints are becoming a normal part of what we do. We have preprint friendly policies at journals. Uh, around 85% of Wiley journals encourage researchers to preprint their articles prior to submitting to the, um, to the journal. We're, we're, we're creating journal integrated preprint services. At Wiley, they're called under review. And if the author um, is given the option to preprint their submitted uh, manuscript at the same time as they submit it to the journal. And if they accept that option, then we make a preprint for them while the article's undergoing uh, peer review. We think that preprints will continue to complement traditional journal publishing while giving you that speed and that openness and perhaps some feedback. So we, we love preprints at Wiley. Um, check out the UKRN primer at the bottom of the screen here, which is all about all about preprints.